Good evening. It is Tuesday, the 24th of September. How are you all? I hope you're keeping well and enjoying the last vestiges of the summer, unless, of course, you're in the Southern Hemisphere, in which case it'll just be starting to come into spring. Yay! Isn't the world a wonderful place? Um, I hope it's, it feels like it's been ages since I've been uh, chatting to you all. I'm sorry I've not been much in the group, but I've uh, I've been checking in and out and catching up with your posts and oh it's um yeah i've just been so busy with lots of things going on but we have christy here and we have angela here as well fantastic hello you two thank you for joining me it's always a joy to speak to you guys and to have a good chat so i uh, hopefully i will be able to see comments but it's possible i won't be as you'll be sideways uh but i will do my best so you saw from my little um, heads up, my little sneaky peek, that I'm going to be doing something with a teapot tonight. Now, I found this adorable little, oh, oops, sorry about that, this little teapot in a charity shop the other day. And how cute is that? So I thought, let's put some mice on it. Aha, now I can see. Ah, there you are, Christy. Hello, you're across from the pond. At so it's, what, noon, your time, isn't it? It's, it's dark here. The nights are drawing in, as they say. Oh, goodness. Anyway, it's lovely to have you here. Uh, so let's see what happens. Now, I've made teapot mice before, obviously, and other wee creatures, but it's been a while since I've done them. So when I saw this, I just thought, that's such a cute little miniature teapot. So I'm going to make as many mice as I can, aiming for three. Um, and yes let's see what happens um let's see how they want to do they'll obviously be one on the handle one on the spout and one popping out from the teapot and if all goes well they will be I'll, I'll put them in the shop tomorrow night um and or tomorrow through the day whichever whichever time or wherever you are in the world but it'll be eight o'clock uh uk time in the evening which will be 12 noon in uh, Christie's world, which is fabulous. So anyway, um, it's been it's been a lovely day, actually. I managed to get out for a walk. I try and get out for a couple of miles at least every day. Today I did five miles into town. And that's my, I think everybody should have some sort of meditation practice or some time out or just, just a, a, a chance just to escape the busyness of of the of the light of world sorry of life and the world um some folk meditate some folk go to crystal bath sound healings which is what my roommate Haley does very well um i walk i just love to walk so i just stride off and i walk into town and then uh, walk back um usually stopping for a cup of coffee on the way because well it would be rude not to really wouldn't it <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, so I managed to get out for a good walk. The weather has been interesting of late. Um, it's been a bit rainy and definitely autumnal. And actually, that's a question for those on the other side, those across the pond. Um, you, you call it fall. So do you have autumn at all? I mean, is autumn a word? Is autumnal a thing? I have no idea. Um, it's the same with like fortnights. Uh, I don't know that fortnight is a common expression in America. Um, obviously fortnight, two weeks. Don't know why. For night, fortnight. Not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what the um, etymology of it is, but it's an interesting one nonetheless. Um, anyway, right. Eh, enough blether. I have pre-cut this. I love this colour of clay. It's so nice. It's called taupe. Um, and I've cut little blocks of five grams which might actually be just a little bit on the big side. Certainly for that little one on the... Yeah, I think I'm going to cut it back down to four. Maybe, yeah, I think four. Um, because they've just, they've got to fit through. He will have to fit through the handle. Uh, I will add his ears on afterwards. But I don't want it to be such a tight squeeze for him. So, yeah, let's let's put it down to back down to four. Four grams. Um, and because of my own internal strange logic-y type things, they all must now be four grams. <laughs> it's it's very, very peculiar, but I have this sort of um, 
this rule that if I'm going to make a group of creatures, they've all got to be the same size, even though that doesn't really count for, that's not really how things work. Uh, anyway, not to worry. So I'm just trimming it down. I should have done this before, actually. Um, I was so pleased when I saw this teapot. I do actually have quite a few more as well, which I just haven't had a chance or I, I have so many little things and bits and pieces that I want to be you know, using, bringing in service of the of the wee creatures and uh, the teapots are one of them. And the little uh, pedestals for uh, marine creatures is another one. I only made about half a dozen of them like about four, five, six years ago and I've never made them since and I really want to. So like the orcas and seals and um, what else did I do? An octopus, I think I did. Uh, I'm sure there were a few more. I can't remember exactly how many more there were now. Anyway, uh, blah. oh, I've, I can see some comments. And you do have fall and autumn. Right. OK, so you can. You, that's good to know. I have a slow collection, apparently. Um, so I the, the, sometimes I can see the comments and sometimes it just freezes. And yeah, my phone kind of goes, oh, no, you're not slow enough. Anyway, so good. I'm glad they have uh, autumn and fall. I thought that you did. But Fortnite. I don't know whether somebody has answered that yet. Is Fortnite a thing in America or is that just a British thing? I don't know. Um, I've, it, do you know, it's fascinating. There's a brilliant Bill Bryson book uh, about the, the history of, of the English language. And he does a, a great comparison of um, American English and English English. Because, of course, in, American English is actually more English because it's based on what English was was like when the founding fathers um, landed in America. So uh, that's that's the basis. So it, it's really your American English spans or uh, goes back to the sort of the 16th century uh, English. So we're the ones that have kind of moved on. It, just how amazing is that? Don't you just it's just wonderful to think about it that way. And Bill Bryson, he is just fabulous. Um, I've read all his books. And uh, I think he, he settled over in um, Durham in the UK, which is not too far from here. It's over in the northeast, towards the northeast of, the, of England. Um, I don't know whether he still lives over here. I think he was, then he might have gone over to Skipton Way, North Yorkshire Way. Anyway, he's great. But I did watch the Walk in the Woods film. Um, I'm not sure... If anybody's come across that one, it's a, it's a brilliant book that he's done where he was walking the Appalachian Trail or the Appalachian Way. Uh, but in this one, they've got Bill Bryson as, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's, you know, Rob, it's Robert Redford, I think. And I just I just think that was a vanity, a vanity um, uh, casting done. I mean, Bill Bryson looks nothing like, <laughs> like Robert Redford. But there you go. It made me laugh anyway. Uh, oh, I'm probably way behind on the comments. I can just see, Christy, you've said that it's not a common usage word here. That's Fortnite. Um, yeah, it's, it's, isn't it strange? So obviously, maybe maybe it's a, a more, it must be a more modern word than it was. Uh, it wasn't in common use in the 16th century. That's, that's my surmising from that. Um, so yeah, I'll, I, I would like to investigate more and find out uh, where it, where it all comes from anyway right what what else has been happening on with 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 queerness it's been thimbles i'm afraid are well i'm not afraid actually i am just still having so much fun with thimbles and giving them to wee creatures and just seeing them play around on them there's something there's at the moment there's just something very very appealing i really really like having the creatures playing around on things and they're getting smaller as well. So before I was going back through my um, uh, my my FAQs on my website, which I I have I drafted years and years ago. And occasionally it's good to to, to have a look and update them. And um, I was prompted. I hadn't updated one of the links to the shop. Uh, so I went back in, went through all my FAQs, worth having a look at them. Um, and yes, when I, was, when I was talking about what size are the wee creatures, and it was like a tiny mice is five grams of clay. Well, now, to me now, five grams is definitely quite a big, quite a big mouse. Um, that That's, you know, 
some of the mice that I've been making recently have only been like one and two uh, grams of clay compared to five or six or, or even seven. So it's so strange how they're they're uh, they're they're coming down in size. It's after all these years they're they're shrinking. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but I love to sort of look back over the 15 years. I can't believe it's been 15 years. Um, but how? Yes, just to, to watch how they have evolved over that time, and and also how I have evolved too. Because um, one of the things which I've been uh, doing more of recently uh, has been, um, I am now chair, which I always want to make a silly joke about being a piece of furniture. But anyway, I'm now chair of a charity, um, the Northwest Early Music Forum, which is a charity which promotes the performance of early music in the Northwest of England. So that's that's keeping me busy. Um and very much enjoying it. You know how much I like I love to sing. And I and I particularly love singing early music, you know, music from the 16th century. So it's actually a real pleasure uh, and a big uh, compliment to have been asked uh, to to be asked to join the committee and to to help carry on the good work that they've been doing for nearly 50 years. So that's been keeping me busy. Um, I actually managed to find a miniature recorder, which I will give to a little mouse to play because <laughs> recorders like the old fashioned, not the school recorders, not the plastic ones that you get at, at secondary school <laughs> that are just the bane of most parents lives, I'm sure. But like proper um, Baroque recorders or, or Renaissance recorders, which are wood and very mellow and just they're usually at a different pitch as well. The, the the modern pitch is at 440 hertz and um early early music pitch is usually at 415 hertz the things you learn the things you find out so yeah so that's that's keeping me busy as well um but the wee creatures and their thimbles in particular well, i must show you actually look i've got these gorgeous i've got two of these enameled metal um thimbles which are just beautiful i've given one to a hedgehog and i i'm not i think that one's going to a fox i'll see i've not made many foxes with thimbles so that's definitely something to to work on right here i am wittering away and i'm just telling you or in fact he's going to be peeping out of the top of the teapot and this one this one this little lump of four grams of clay <laughs> uh, will be standing i think he'll he's going to have to stand oh sorry i'll get this one he's going to stand in there somehow i think probably clinging on to the the top because i think he's going to be a little bit scared it's just this is it the wee creatures are at their best when they tell a story i think that's that's a conclusion i've reached after all these years um they if they're not telling a story then they're just sitting there or standing there just no no they're 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 alive so they've got to you know communicate that um i'm going to be making more of the tiny toadstool teeny tiny toadstool mice um as well because they haven't had they haven't stopped having fun with that yet <laughs> so i've got some other colors i've got those lovely pastel ones from the from the last uh the last shop event um and i'm going to do um some red ones as well because they're very cute so i'll see what kind of mischief they get up to as well it's not going to be a big shop event uh tomorrow but there'll be enough because another reason for keeping it on the small side is that next week i'm going to be away i'm going away with enrique to spain we're going to um Jimena de la frontera which is in the south uh, of spain and um we'll be We'll be, I'll be singing and Enrique will be swimming, not at the same time. He'll be, he'll just, we'll base, base ourselves in Himena and then I'll just be um, hanging out with our other singers and then, um, yeah, singing. And then he'll come back in of an evening and go off swimming and then, yeah. So it's only for, we, we fly out on the Sunday but we're, and we're back the following Sunday. So it's, it's not quite a, a full week of being there. Uh, but yeah, that's the first time that I will have been away, um, like abroad, flying anywhere. Um, apart from, I know I had the very, very short Portugal trip in, in May, but this is the first time that I've been, been away for more than just a weekend. 
So, ooh, um, yeah, so I'm going to be away. So the whole point of that is I want to have all the wee creatures uh, off, sent off to their new homes in time for me leaving. Uh, and also I will have, I've, I've received whoever has sent back their forms, I've got them and I will go through them before I go away as well. Um, I should get the autumn trees. Uh, oops, sorry, just bring that back in to see which way. Now he needs to be looking looking out the way but facing that way if, if that means is so his body is going to be facing towards the spout this is the other thing i know i'm i know i'm interrupting myself but hey why break the habit of a lifetime i've been doing it for so many years now um this is uh this is how i get some of the movement into the creatures it's actually rather than sort of sticking their their um putting their paws on or their legs on sticking them on I, I try and sort of mould the bodies to on the basis of which direction they're going in, if that makes sense. So this is, and that saves me try, trying to twist the head round as well, uh, which sounds more drastic than it really is. Um, that means that it's not, you know, this little mouse is naturally looking, it's going to be looking over towards us, even though his body is actually facing that way. It it makes it might seem like a, a a bit of a you know a subtle difference and indeed it is but it it really works. Um, now I'm going to take off that lid so it doesn't clatter about the place, and I'll just make sure that he's going to fit in there. And yet, yeah, so you can see that he's going to be hugging. <laughs> he's going to be hugging the spout because he's a bit fr afraid and he doesn't want to sort of fall off basically so that's that mouse then I'm going to have one I do like I do like seeing their hineys I did try and use a bit of American slang apologies it probably sounds a bit weird but the bottoms of the mice um yes I'm going to have this one with his leg sort of swinging up uh and holding on you know so his his paw one of his that paw his the left paw will be ho hoisting him up there but yeah and he'll be leaning over there so and uh and his other leg will be kind of swinging round to, for so he can get some momentum so that that's going to be the position of that little mouse so he's going to be hanging through the um through the handle and then this one this is where it'll probably look a little bit cruel, but um, this, the inside lid or lip of the um, teapot, uh, he's going to have to be sort of hooked into it. And I'll need to glue him in place actually once he's in, but I'm, I'm going to have to just sort of make sure that he's, oh, there you go. So you see how it's marked where he's in, inside the pot. Don't particularly like marking them like, like this, but this is the best way that they're going to stay in place. So he's going to pop in. Um, so that's basically, that's the structure that I'm going for, for those three. That's going to be the design. They, they do look a bit odd, I know. No eyes, no ears, no paws, no nothing. But I can see the sense of their movement and they're, they're going to work. This little one here. I'll need to put the paws, uh, the paws, the ears on from the other side. So once he's in place, then I'll uh, I'll I'll add his his ears on from this side because he they, that's not going to work otherwise. He's the ears wouldn't fit through the hole. I don't think. So there you go. So that's what we're working on now. What are we doing for time? Oh, we're doing quite well for time. It's only twenty past. Um, and there are no, I, I'm getting slow connection messages, error messages. So apologies that if you're saying anything and I'm, I'm really not ignoring you, I'm just not getting them through. So I'm going to make this little guy first because he's just, oh, I really like him. He's just, he's looking a little bit scared. So let's carefully ease him off and bring him round and it's just like a normal mouse now, basically, but in a slightly unusual position because he's not going to be able to stand up on his own. He will be, I'll bake him in, in situ. I'll bake him, um, I'll, I'll put the, the whole, the mice with the, the teapot in the oven, uh, uh, the toaster oven, and they'll bake at 110, 115 degrees. So 
and I, I do get asked a lot, but when you think about it, think what temperature. Yeah, so I get asked about, well, can you put things in the oven? Do they not melt? And it's like, well, if you think about how, uh, what temperature um, ceramics get fired at, I mean, it's like eight, nine hundred, a thousand degrees. So, yeah, putting it into a tiny to tabletop toaster oven is not going to cause a problem. <laughs> the only thing which it does, and I'm sure I've said this before, I will sometimes test if I'm not sure. Most things will be absolutely fine in the oven. Um, you know, like paper, for example, doesn't burn um, until Fahrenheit 451, for those who have read the book. Um, so, yeah, it's it, it's usually really not a problem. Glass also is uh, cured um, at a very, very high temperature. So it's really, really not an issue at all. The only thing, as I say, is plastic. Uh, some plastics, not all, resin's pretty good, but sometimes will, um, it, it will. Ibox, we've got an Ibox. I'm not sure whether Alison is on the call today, uh, but just for her, we've got the Ibox. Um, yeah, so um, some, some resins, some plastics really don't get on well with heat, like too much heat, anything above 100 degrees. So... There have been one or two times when I have um, tried something and it has not worked. Um, and it's, it's, it's a shame when that happens, but thankfully it doesn't happen too often. Sorry, I'm now leaning over because I'm peeling over the top of my glasses. So I hope you're not seeing the top of my head. Um, just to like, try and find two eyes, the right size. Uh, oh, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That'll do. Okay, so these are the two mil beads, but there are two mil beads and there are two mil beads. So just carefully putting that in, carefully putting in the other eye. These uh, these bent nose pliers are just brilliant. I think they're jewelry making pliers. Definitely on my list of essential equipment that I have. That was one of the FAQs on the website is what what equipment couldn't you live without? And that's definitely one of them. Um, the other one is obviously my toaster machine and the other one, my, my um, toaster oven. The other one are my dealer scales, as I like to call them. And the other one are these ball shapers, which are just brilliant. They're, they're fabulous for putting in the eyes, particularly... Because by pushing them in, it it forms it forms the eye socket as well. It gives them a, a really good base for the eyes. And all of a sudden, look, there's a little mouse peering up at you, and you can see he's 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 looking a bit worried already. And then just gently shaping the curve of his cheek. And I don't use gloves or anything like that. I just use my thumbs and, and then smooth very carefully to make sure that there's um, no fingerprints. At one point, I joked about burning them off, but that would be a bit extreme, I think. So I don't do that. Right, that's my mouse ear uh, cutter. And then I have previously rolled out some little sheets of the beige... This is Sculpey. No, it's not. It's female professional doll art clay, actually. Rose colour. That is my preferred inner mouse ear and paw and tail colour. It's it's lighter than what I used to use and lighter than what I use for guinea pigs, for example. I should probably make notes of all this. One of these days I'm going to be like, what do, what do I use for this? I have, didn't write it down. I have no idea. But not yet. That day is not yet upon us. So... Right, so now another ball shaper, a little bit larger, and this is just to shape, shape the ear. And to get rid of the flob, we have flob. And just to make sure, I've only recently started using the larger cutter for the inside of the ears, before I used to use a smaller one, but this goes right to the edge of the of the ear it just makes it look nicer 
It's good to always reinvent things or to keep pushing things and making sure that things work. The wee creatures have never been one to, they've never rested on their laurels, let's put it that way. Um, they've always wanted to kind of keep evolving and I'm very grateful for that. Um, I think to, to stand still is, mm, no, no, not up, not up for that. One should, one should keep following one's bliss. I really, I do believe that. Keep doing what makes you happy. If staying put makes you happy, that's great. But if you're staying put because you're bored or afraid, well, that's not so good. I think we're always meant to evolve and push on, push forward. And the wee creatures do that, which is great. And that's one of the reasons why I'm now doing this, uh, the work with this charity um, that I knit when I go home. I knit. Um just just scarves, <laughs> nothing fancy. Uh, not interested in doing anything which isn't a rectangle, basically. Um, I have uh, moved on to blankets, uh, but which are just giant scarves, basically. Um, there's something very zen about it. I do it because it's zenful. It's, uh, and it's lovely just to... It, it's actually, do you know what it's done? It has really taught me to slow down knitting blankets particularly because there's no quick fix you can't get a blanket finished in the night no matter how how much I may try by staying up all, all the hours but you can never you can never get them finished quickly so actually it has really helped uh it's helped slow me down uh I, I I'm not have so many it's all got to be done in a day it's all got to be done really quickly it's I'm, yeah, it's been very good for me, actually, knitting. Um, and, you know, I've given away so many scarves. Uh, I will be giving away so many blankets. So, you know, it's just, well, as many as I can do. I'm working on three at the moment. Um, and they're just, oh, yeah. And I'm I'm enjoying with that, actually, with the knitting. I'm enjoying getting to learn a, a different craft a, a different skill a different you know knowing about finding out about different needle types or different wool types or different stitches it's great to learn new things it keeps you young keeps you interested and just makes life so so much more fun i mean we we stopped watching television years ago we don't watch television so when i go home i'll be knitting and ricky will play the piano Sometimes I'll play the piano or I'll sing or I'll do just there's so many things, so many things I want to do. And that's fabulous. Um, it's it's a it's a really it's a good, a good play. Life is good. Life is really excellent. Um, right. We've got the ears in place now. And I'm just going to use the ball shaper just to smooth out the brush marks. Right now. So you can sort of see him trembling a little bit and being a little, oh, what's going on? Now, I need to put his paws on. It may be that I've only got time to do this mouse, possibly the other mouse poking through the, the other handle. <laughs> I might have to do that. Just getting rid of some scrap clay from the inside of that. This was the cutter I used to use for the inside ear of the mice, but it, was, it wasn't really big enough. Anyway, that's by the by. It's very good for mouse paws, front and back. And of course, he'll need his tail. So I'm going to use this cutter for his tail. And that just means, means that I've got the right amount of clay for it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, right. So now I, I can't sign these mice, that's the only thing, um, because it would be on show and no. So they will just come with their certificate. Um, otherwise, I'd be adding adding their the signature to one of their paws. Right. A little bit of extender medium to strengthen the join. That's what I put on the ears as well. Right. Let's bring bring this back in. Now, because he's going to be right up against the edge of the teapot, I need to put his tail on first before he goes on. And ideally, I'd have his paws as well. 
but let's put this let's get his tail um lengthened first of all i'm sorry about that yeah i'm just getting slow connection so i i'm i can't see any any new comments i do apologize i will catch up with them <laughs> assuming there are some maybe not maybe nobody's talking to me and i'm just talking to myself that's entirely possible that would be okay um anyway sorry uh i'll catch up after a uh, when when i'm able to when i'm able to i shall do so right just a little bit of flob on the ear right look at that little face i mean they're just they're so expressive i love them they're just they are you know i i don't have children i have never had any wish for children these are my children if that doesn't sound like totally weird they that that's i kind of feel like i'm sending them out into the world to make people happy and uh, and but i'm i'm only responsible in so far as they have chosen me to put them out there does that make sense I uh, don't want to sound too weird about it, but I'm very fortunate that they have chosen me. So just putting a little bit of uh, liquid clay on the tail. And see, so by putting this at the back as well, again, it's sort of conveying that that movement. You know, this is a mouse that's look, facing forward. The body's facing forward, but his head is turned over now. That needs to sort of come to the front. And I also need to put the paw on two as well. But there'll be some positioning to be done once he's up there. And I want him to be kind of hugging, hugging the spout as much as he can. Right. OK, let's get this back. I'm going to move this guy off and this wee guy too. Just for just for the time being. Right. So this is all quite delicate work. To kind of see his tail's kind of impinging. So I'm going to have to sort of squeeze him, make him a little thinner. Because I don't want to deform the mouse uh, too much. He will be deformed a little bit. But he's still got to look real. He's still got to look as always in the right place. So I will tap his paw down a little bit there. And tap his paw over a little bit there. There we go. So he's kind of standing in tiptoes there. He's got his tail coming out. And I will probably just put, have his tail coming around there. So it's sitting on his First paw, that paw. Now I'll have him coming away from, a little bit from the teapot. There we go. <laughs> oh, they do make me smile. They really do. I'll need to reshape that a little bit when he's coming off. In fact, I'll do that now. So it's important just to ease him off in place. I mean, that's the the clay gets deformed that's that's it's i'm molding it to the shape of what of the teapot so but the trick is to mold it in such a way that it doesn't look as though i've just sort of jammed him in yeah so there's a bit more work to be done on that paw but there we go let's just center him in and I'll shape it round so he's standing on his tippy toes there, standing on his tippy toes there. There we go. I think he's quite as far down as he was. Ah, that's better. All ah, right, so I had him leaning forward a little bit as well. So that's him. He's a bit more bedded in, but not. Not completely a stripe. Right. Okay. This is good. Uh, obviously, sorry. Just it's when I get, um, yeah, I I really can't multitask, or I find it quite hard to. And I, yes, you get the whole blethers, but.
but if I'm sort of concentrating on something, then I'm sorry, I'll just I'll just shut up because my brain goes, Oi, come on, you've got to concentrate over here. And then, yeah, that's what I have to do. Right. So a little bit. This is going to be the pause that will be hugging the teapot spout. Now, because I'll, I'll, I will glue him in place. But not quite yet. There we go. So he's holding on for grim life, grim death. And he'll do the same at the other side. Sorry, I, I haven't checked the camera position. I hope that's okay. I hope you can see all right. Oh, maybe just come down a little bit. I think I'll have his paw coming up there. And then, just as well, I put the lid and the eye box on. And what I'll probably do before I glue it in, I will properly stick that to the body so that it, it, it doesn't look stuck on from the front. So there we go. <laughs> One little scaredy mouse standing on top of the teapot spout. Still a bit more work to do with his paw, but it's getting there. You can see a little bit of blob there. Yeah. There we go. So, now the next thing that I'll do for him, I'm just looking at the time actually, it's probably quite a good time to stop. Yeah, because he needs a little bit. There's some, I can see some muck. Just there. Just tidy him up a little bit. Right. So, one mouse down. Two to go. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to finishing these, these three mice. They are going to be lots of fun. So, anyway. Right. I'll say goodnight for now. Uh, but it's been a it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'll catch up with all the comments once I am uh, once I finish the live chat. I don't think my phone can really cope <laughs> too much with it. <laughs> but thank you for um, thank you for being here. It's always just a delight to know I can just blether away and you're you're all there. So uh, I shall report back with pictures once the other two are finished. It's going to be a cute one. All right. See you soon. Thanks for thanks again. Have a lovely rest of the day. Have a lovely evening. See you soon. Bye.